This is an overview of the Testimonial Carousel by Unlimited Elements. Let's get started. To get started, I'm going to search for Testimonial Carousel inside of my widgets pane. And now because Elementor also has a Testimonial Carousel, make sure that you're going to drag and drop the one by UE by seeing on the top right the UE icon. So I'm going to drag and drop that inside of my Elementor canvas. And I'm going to take you over all of the steps how you can customize this. And I'm going to try to showcase whatever is special about this carousel and unique about it rather than the regular testimonial carousel. So one of the unique features that this carousel has is the center feature. Over here you can see we have a center feature and once you click on that then over here it says make 3D and if I click on make 3D this will highlight the center image more than the other items. So this is a really unique feature. And usually inside of carousels, you're going to want to do that because you want to highlight uh, whatever item is in the center, especially when we're talking about testimonial carousels uh, that you need to read one by one. So the user is going to have less distraction seeing the other ones. And once he gets this one to the middle, then he can read that one. So that's one of the unique features. And the next thing I want to show you guys is how you can edit the content over here. So inside of items, we have a repeater field. We can add items, we can duplicate items, delete items, reorder items by drag and drop. And once you click on an item, you can start editing it. Another unique feature is that you can give each item over here a unique background. So for example, if I want this one uh, to be in a red background color, I could achieve that as well. So pretty cool. Over here, we put in the title, subtitle, text, rating for each one. So you can change the rating if you want to. And you can even link the title. So over here, you can decide that the title is going to go to a separate link. What I'm going to do in the example today is I'm going to populate the content inside of over here with posts. So to do that, I'm going to the part that's called source. And over here we have multiple types of sources, but the one that makes most sense in this case can be or posts or ACF custom field if it's going to be in a single post template or JSON or CSV data. The one I'm going to use today is post as the source because I have a custom post type that's called team members and each team member has been assigned a testimonial uh, to showcase inside of the carousel. Once I select posts over here, you can see that it's showing the featured image and the post name. Well, right now that doesn't make much sense because it's showing all sorts of unrelevant articles inside of my carousel. So what I need to do is I need to set the post query. To set the post query, I'm gonna go into items post query and over here in post type, I'm going to select the relevant post type. In my case, this is going to be team members. So I've selected the right one and now we can see the featured image makes more sense and the post title makes more sense but we have a problem and that's because the text over here and the text over here is just dummy text. So to change those, I'm going to go back to source and over here you can see that the title and the image source have been populated, but the subtitle and the text have not. So now I need to determine what fields I want to show in these two. So the first one is going to be the subtitle that's for the city in this case. And what I need to select over here is post meta field. And once I select that, it's asking me, what is the meta field name? If you do not know the name, there's a feature over here that says show meta fields. And that will just list or kind of debug 
the post, and it's showing you all the custom fields that have been, at, been added to this post type. So over here you can see phone number, email, start of employment, and testimonial, and city. So in this case, I'm going to use testimonial and city. Now I know the names and how they've been called in the back end. And I can turn off the meta field debug. And what I'm going to do now is write over here inside of the field name city. And now the city name is going to be populated. And you can see that each team member now has a different city name. Awesome. The next thing I'm going to do is the text source. So over here inside the text source, I'm going to select also post meta field and I'm just going to write the word testimonial. And now, oops, this one. Awesome. So now you're going to see that inside of the text over here, it's bringing inside the correct text. Cool. The next part, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort of make a more flexible layout with um, remote controls. If I want to design the bullets in a different way, if I want to put the arrows in a separate column or section, I can do that as well. To do that, over here in connected widget settings, you need to enable remote connection. This means uh, that you can connect remote controls to it. Unlimited Elements has a bundle of remote controls, several types. The most common types are bullets and arrows. So now what I'm going to do is add a new column. In my case, I want that column to be on the left side. So I'm just going to drag and drop the testimonials to that side and we can play around with the width on this side. I'm going to go back to the testimonials and I'm going to turn off the make 3D and center effects. Awesome. Another important thing over here is that you can set the number of items. So I'm going to set the number of items to two instead of three, just so that looks a little bit better. And over here on the left side, I'm going to add a remote arrow. And let's just see what that does. So now we have navigation arrows outside of the carousel that you can use to navigate the carousel itself. I'm going to go back to the carousel and open the layout section. And this is a good time that we can go over whatever is inside over here. So instead of show arrows, I'm going to say no. And this will delete these arrows inside of the carousel layout. Now, you can see there are a lot of options over here. You can turn on or off each part of the carousel. And for example, if I'm going to click show rating, now I can see that there's a rating over here. And if I'm going to close the icon, then this icon over here is not going to show. You can also show this in an opposite way. So if I reverse it, everything is going to show reversed. And if we jump into style, you can see that it's separated into many sections. And each section has all the styling options that you need. So, for example, credentials is this part. And if I'm going to add some spacing, you can see that it's moving it down. Now, credentials is in a column layout, but it could also be in a row layout, for example. So there's a lot of options over here of how you could set this up. This part is looking pretty good, I think. Um, maybe let's just turn off the bullets. So over here in layout, we can turn off the dots. And another really cool effect that you could do is with remote bullets. So I'm going to move those inside over here. And let's center them. And what I like doing over here is giving the active bullet a different width. 
So that's kind of a gooey effect, which people really, really like. Awesome. So this is set up. And let's add a title to our layout. Just so people know what we're talking about. This is going to be WordPress testimonials. And I'm going to make that black. Now we can make this layout full width. So to make it full width, I'm going into the section full width. And that's about it. Column gap, I'm going to make it as wide as possible. And what I want to do is kind of an offset effect. To achieve an offset effect, that means I want to show uh, the next slide, but I don't want to show the whole slide. I want to show part of it. To do that, first of all, I want to take off the padding over here on the right side. So I'm going into the column, advanced, and I'm going to turn on the padding over here. So padding from the top, we need 30. From the right side, I need zero. From the bottom, we can leave it like that. And from the left, 30. So right now, it's as close as possible to the right side. I'm going to go back to the carousel. And over here, I'm going to choose stage padding. But I want to add padding only from the right side. So this is going to be my offset effect. And now we can tell it how many pixels we want to offset. So I'm just going to set that to 100 pixels. And now you can see that it's offsetting 100 pixels. We can even make that a little bit wider, maybe 150. So we can see a little bit more of the next item. Awesome. So this is set up. Over here in the column, I'm going to click on the column. And I'm going to vertically align it to the middle. Awesome, so this is starting to look good as well. We can also add some text over here just to make the layout and look better. And what's nice about this is that you can place them wherever you want. You could have placed them on the top right side or whatever, wherever you want. So this is looking pretty good. The next step that I want to show, and maybe the final step, is how I add filters over here because these team members are separated into three categories or three taxonomies. They're separated into developers, designers, and QA. So what I eventually want to achieve is that the user will be able to filter the testimonials um, that only the designers have written about WordPress or maybe only those that the developers have written. So inside of Unlimited Elements, you have many types of filter types, but the most common one is called tabs filter. So I'm going to use that one. Before I add that widget to the page, because it kind of works similar to how the arrows and the bullets here work, it's just a different widget that you add it to the page, design however you want. But before I'm going to add it, I need to enable uh, filtering inside of this widget. So I'm going to click on the widget, post pagination and filtering, and enable post filtering. And all our filters are Ajax based. That means that the page will not refresh. So, and they're very fast as well. So over here, we have the filter behavior as Ajax and the post fil filtering enabled. And now we can search for the filter widget. So that's going to be tabs filter. And I'm going to drag and drop that over here. And as you can see right now, it's showing all the categories inside of my WordPress website, which is not what I wanted to do at all. So I need to set which taxonomies or categories I'm going to show over here. And this is done inside of term selection. As we've done before over here, I'm going to scroll down to the team members. And now it's just going to show whatever taxonomies are assigned to team members, which are the relevant ones. So that's already looking much better. And let's align this to the left. So to do that, that's in layout options. Let's align it to the start. And over here as well, 
one of the reasons that all the widgets are separated is to allow as much flexibility as possible layout wise and also design wise because if i would have added all of these inside of over here then you wouldn't have so much uh, design flexibility and let's go into layout again add some gap over here between these inside of style we can sort of like style the tabs in a different way and since we have a little border radius going on over here i'm going to add it as well over here and this is looking pretty good as well also i'm going to click update to save and the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to preview this inside of my front end view the reason we need to test this in the front end view is because the filters will work only in the front end and also the remote arrows and bullets they might work in some cases in the back end but the best way to test the behavior is in the front end so remember that when you want to test something with unlimited elements you need to click preview and now you can uh, test the remote controls and the filters so uh, this is looking pretty good i see my bullets are working and I see over here the arrows are working nicely as well. And now it's time to test the filters. So I'm going to click designers. And now it's showing only designers, the testimonials that have been written by designers inside of my carousel. If I click on developers, it's going to show a different set of team members. And it's showing only the ones that have been written by developers. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions, you can post them in the comments and I'm going to see you in the next video.